Okay, so video for the Yanyan Moonlight. This is the latest tribrid on the market, I'm pretty sure. That's it right there on my desk, sitting in its really, really cool case. Let me move my head without making you sick. Take a look over my left shoulder, and that's the frequency graph right there. It's got a sub bass over mid bass. It's got a very nice subtle glide, as I prefer. That makes drum kits, four string bass guitar, male vocals in particular, sound good without diminishing the quality of everything that follows after it. It's got enough bass. It sounds the way I expect it to. It's not overly emphasized. Um, it's not for bass heads, but I found in listening to it, it does quite well with low frequency stuff. Um, the mids are nice and clean. They're corrected before between two and 300 hertz. You get to the gain around 1K, and you've got about 7 dB of elevation, which is kind of the sweet spot. This is something that's very similar to the MIM uh, Dark Magician, I believe is the name of that. It's a dynamic driver, but it's got that... I, it's a really appealing kind of tuning for me, and this has... Uh, a tuning that's similar also to the T, the original, and I, I guess the second one, but this one has ESTs instead of balanced armatures taking care of the trouble. Um, and that's a recipe that I probably would have been quite interested in before I saw this graph. If somebody had said, how about something like the T with ESTs instead of BAs? Yeah, I'll take that. Um, and that's what this is, and it sounds quite nice. Before we continue, the case on this is... Companies watch my videos. They watch lots of people's videos. I would recommend somebody sell this case separately. Offer it in different colors, because this looks like a QDC with its colors, but, you know, black, red, uh, whatever. This is very nice. Wind your cable up inside that. Put your buds on left, right side. Um, and I, for my four or five nicest sets, uh, like the Elysian, and that, that's the case that came with the Elysian, which is fine, but that's a nicer case, and that's a $4,000 earphone, and I'd like to put it in this little case, so companies, sell that, source it, put it up online, um, I'll do a video for it, a lot of my viewers have multiple sets, and some of them are quite expensive, and they want to take nice care of them, so sorry to segue off of that, but this is, this is nice, I like this case a lot, um, let me go ahead and Take a look. This is Linsole. Linsole's got four uh, Yanyans right now. I bought my Canon from Penon because Linsole didn't have them or sell them, but I bought it, listened to it, and really was impressed with it. Um, a lot of people had it prior to me having it, and the, they already liked it. And there are people that are buying it now, and they're not everybody likes all things, but there's a lot of people that are fans of the Canon, and I'm one of them. I think it's a really good set. I've also got the Rosemary, which is a hybrid. I believe it's a single dynamic and eight balanced armature. It's the most expensive one, but this is kind of, I think, a relic of 2020, 2021, where they were doing the multiple BAs with a single dynamic driver. The Moonlight is more of a 2022 set in that it's a tribrid. It's using the latest technology, the Sony EST. has been around for almost two years, but this is their version. Um, also, the Aladdin I have, and I'll be doing a video for that, but we're here for the Moonlight. Let me go ahead and click on this, put up some of my own pictures. This is a nice set in its fit which is very nice. It's it's rather small, um, shallow, compared to some of the big, fat, chunky. Now that I think about the size of some of the tribrids, I wonder why. Because this is... They could probably put two more BAs in here, and it would be maybe still the same size. So why are the other ones so fat? I have no idea. They did a really good job with this, though. Um, the tuning, as I just showed you on the frequency graph, let me talk about some music. Uh, low frequency hit, Big Boy Kill Jill, Triple Drop also has a uh, four string bass guitar that comes in, Hatsune Miku, which is a, really a treble or upper mids event, pretty much if there's some shout because it's a vocaloid computer generated female voice, I, I either put up with it to get to the point, which is the low frequency, or I enjoy it, and I actually enjoyed it on this one. Um, the the drop was fine, the triple drop, the lowest one was very nice and clear. Um, and the uh, forcing bass guitar sounded fantastic, so it does this quite well. If you've got like a hip hop centric library, you should be fine. It's not bass head, but it's it's got the drops. If they're there, it's in the mix. Whether you listen to Nas or Tupac or whatever, it's gonna have it. It's tuned good for that. Again, not bass head, however. This is Black Sabbath Masters of Reality. This is. Let me give you a visual real quick. I might throw this up. This is. What I'm talking about, this is, uh, he's leading into them right now. 
you got a drummer that's playing almost kind of like a like a mini solo within the song and you can see the bassist in the background right here and he's really doing a very complex and rapid play right here there's lots of pulls and releases per second his his ability to be perceived over the drum or vice versa is very difficult with dynamic drivers and when I talked about this track previously I talked about how the Tin Hi Fi P1 was something that was a re revelation to me because I had thought that my version even though it's a, a lossless file it's a vinyl rip uh, it's good quality I've heard it on the Susvire and other stuff and I thought it sounded great and I could pick out the drummer and I could pick out the bassist but with earphones it seemed to be a a degraded experience until I heard the Tin Hi Fi P1 which I didn't really like and I never wrecked it and I never put it in any of my top five lists but it really showed me that my version this one right here of that track was fine because it sounded great I could hear the drummer and I could hear the bass and I could I could listen to the, just the bass line with no problem I could listen to just the drummer with no problem I, I could listen to them both at the same time the, the Tin Hi Fi P1 was the first. Planars are great and they're popular now because there's some things about them that have clear benefits. And for a person like myself with a library like mine, a moment like this is something that uh, is audibly superior on a planar compared to most dynamic drivers. So in the future, I'm going to be very strict with how I grade this track because this set I think is very good I think it's very competitive with its rivals at its price point however it's not great with this because it's a little too busy for the dynamic driver and then when I think about it and I go back I realize I've there's a lot of sets that it did decently and I I wasn't doing like a check mark and equal or a bats or a red X but I'm gonna do that now and I put it equal for this it's not bad but it's not plain our level it's not 7 Hertz it's not s12 it's not 10 hi fi p1 level of clarity and ability to get separation between two instruments in the same part of the frequency response graph going on at the same moment in time on the same track and they're kind of canceling or masking each other it happens a lot with dynamic drivers and it's even stuff that costs more money um, I, if I wouldn't do the Elysian X now anymore but if I went back to that and I was stricter that might come out different that's my I paid 4,000 I'm totally fine with that but this is this is a little too busy for the moonlight but it is for most of the tribrids now that I think about it and it wouldn't work with something that has a tucked in mid bass like a monarch mark two or one or variations because that diminishes the that pulls away the impact from the drum kit and also the bass pulls and releases are inauthentic so I need the tuning that's like this but dynamic drivers really do for the most part struggle with something like this so the score that I'm putting on this is probably gonna be fairly common and we'll see how that turns out in the future um, the next would be mid bass is pretty much what this check is and this is dire straits and it's called Sultans of Swing and it's a track that the bassist sounds like he's too forward if that mid bass is too elevated it puts energy on the bassist to a point where it, the bassist sounds forward in the same sense that if you took a gain around 1k to 3k and you elevated too much the result might be that you think you're getting some shout you're you're putting the vocals forward that's that's an effect of manipulating or boosting that region if you take the mid bass and you boost it too much or extend it out into the mids too much you're gonna get a replay on something like dire straits that gives you a feeling that the basis number one is too prominent um, is crowding the stage and the quality of the low frequency can get kind of bloated and then when male vocals come in um, it can also have the same problem this track sounds great um, the basis sounds perfect he sounds like he's pinning down the track he doesn't get over on Mark Knopfler and bother the iconic guitar play and vocals that he has but he is still pinning down the track so the mid bass tuning is absolutely fine there's no problem with that so the the drops and the four string bass guitar sound great the very busy track on Black Sabbath sounds uh, good I 
I didn't feel bad about it. I just realized this is not planar. And, but then again, most DDs are not. And then listening to this for mid bass, I thought it, it sounds great. This this track actually was a very very nice on that set right there. Listening to the mid frequencies, listening to stuff like Elton John, Someone Save My Life Tonight, Philadelphia Freedom, focusing a lot on Fleetwood Mac rumors because of the four singers, two male, two female, one's lead, three are backing, two are kind of doing a kind of a duet, and then there's maybe two backing. There's a lot of a lot of arrangements of vocals in this, and vocals are very much um, living in the mids. They are kind of born. The, interestingly enough, male and female vocals have their transition from fundamental to harmonic all about the same. Around 1.5k, male vocals s dig a little deeper and start a little earlier, but they're, the crossover point is pretty much the same. Um, so poor tuning for female vocals often equals vocals, but there is a slight difference. So people that love female vocals know um, it, that has to do more with kind of the upper mids. Um, the impact on vocals. So I thought that this sounded really good. I thought that I thought that Jim Croce sounded good. I thought that vocals in general sounded quite nice and I enjoyed them. Um, listening to let me check my actually let me go back. Speaking of female vocals I've got two right here. This is Dreamboat Annie by Heart. Of course, I believe they're sisters, the Wilson sisters. Um, they sound very good on this. I think that the energy that it's giving in the gain region and the slightly subdued treble, for me personally, I find it uh, engaging and also non-fatiguing for long-term listening. So I thought that this sounded really good. Um, listening to something like Neil Young with his honky vocals, which is something that can, depending on the configuration or the tuning, can sometimes be a little bit... Um, less than enjoyable. I think that the subtle tuning of this in the upper midst of treble benefits and, and the cuts around 5 and 6k or 5, 6, 7, 8 pretty much are having a nice impact on this because that's part of the harmonic extension of Neil Young's vocals and it tamps down a little bit with the cut and it actually sounds nice. There was no point with this set where I felt like well that's too much. Actually nothing to be honest with you getting into the treble I thought that Michael Jackson all the little micro details on the very well produced Thriller album sounded great I thought that Cymbal Strikes on Led Zeppelin um, Hey Hey What Can I Do sounded good it had proper birth life and death there's three parts there's when the stick strikes the cymbal that impact the initiative moment then there's the decay it's like if I take my hand and I knock it on the table the Basically, the fundamental of that is when my knuckle strikes the table. But 75% of the sound that you hear is the harmonic, the extension, the result of that event. Symbols are the same. You strike it. Of course, it's because of its design, it's supposed to shimmer. But oh, some tuning will make that sound unnaturally mm, bright um, and offensive, or it'll make it sound like it's kind of muted, like you'll hear a psst instead of a psst. Or you'll hear something that sounds like it's got maybe too much life, th though that's a little bit more rare. Um, I thought that cymbals on this sounded pretty good. I didn't have any issue with it. Listening to live tracks like Little Feet, um, Waiting for Columbus, Dixie Chicken, One More from the Road, um, Freebird by Leonard Skinner. I thought it had a, also Frampton. Um, it gave the appropriate amount of space to not feel like you're in a nightclub. There's some sets that sound like, and the headphones do this, especially closed back, where you listen to live stuff, but you can't shake the feeling that you're in a, like a club. Like everything's condensed and it's put together and you're okay with that because everything sounds pretty good, but you can't get that sense of space that... Um, an open back planar might give you because number one it's open back and because the speed of planar you can much more likely have an enjoyable listen to live recordings than maybe some close back and earphones have issues sometimes giving you that sense of space because it's really all dependent on the manipulation of the frequency graph because it's a psychoacoustic illusion to have earplugs in your ear but to feel that you're amongst a crowd amongst uh, musicians on stage with a crowd that's all psychoacoustics and 
a set like this actually does it pretty good without doing it by intense uh, upper treble or treble. Um, so I think that the tuning of this is very good. Let me go ahead and get back to here. Uh, it's it's competitive in its price range. It's something that people who think that some of the bulky sets, um, like the Monarch, if you got the first one or even the second one, or even the Clairvoyance was something that was a little bit chunky. Some people moved on not as much for the tuning or because of, but because they couldn't get a good fit because it was just such a big thing sticking out of their ear, like a plastic Z1R. It's just, it's, if it doesn't function, then it doesn't matter how good it sounds if you can't keep it seated in your ear. So people that had a problem like that, you might want to take a look at this if you got a chance to demo it. I would recommend you do because the fit of this is very good. It's probably the best fitting tribert I've had. I think the tuning's very nice. The bass is good. The mids are nice. The treble's good. It's not offensive at any point. The graph wouldn't indicate that it is. To the ears, it's not. Listening to things that might be like that, like ELO or um, other things, it, it, that didn't happen. Massive attack, there's some parts of that, even though it's low frequency dominant, there's a lot of upper mid treble energy going on. It's like a, it's almost like V music, actually. Um, v st tune stuff does well with massive attack, in my opinion. Um, this, this does good, really, with everything. It doesn't have a clear weak point besides price, but I don't know that there's anything out there that's clearly more affordable and is clearly superior because the variations I think is like by five forty nine, which would be a hundred dollars cheaper, but it's got the mid bass tuck, which if I can't hear a bassist or drum kit, then I'm not really into um the set, I guess. So I'm out. <laughs>